The Bach cello suites are obviously a major staple of the cello repertoire. And, you know, playing Bach is one of those things where it's very personal. Everyone has their understanding of how it should be done. Um, some people that's informed by historical practice, others it's just personal taste or, you know, different traditions that have evolved over the years. Um, and that's part of the beauty of Bach, is that you get to figure out how to do it for yourself um, and figure out what works for you. So what I'm going to talk about a little bit here is not so much, you know, what I do, because you definitely don't need to do the same thing, um, but how I figure out what I'm going to do, all right, and how I go about dissecting Bach and figuring out what I like and what I don't. Um, and so it's just some, some ideas for practice, mainly, is what, what I'm going to give you here. So I'm going to use the Prelude of the First Suite, since that is certainly a popular favorite. And a um, couple things to think about just specific to this piece. Leave your fingers down whenever you can. Um, you know, a lot of what you're playing here is basically chords with some fancy bowing patterns. So uh, it can simplify things a lot if you just, just leave your fingers down and, and let your bow kind of, you know, scoot around. So for example, if you were playing something like this... <laughs> Notice, you know, sounded kind of fancy, but my fingers did not move an inch, right? And there are a whole lot of opportunities in this piece to just leave your fingers down. So keep an eye out for that. Um, now, if I were going to, say, approach the very beginning of this piece, what I would do is I, was, I would look at gestures, all right, and figure out what notes can be grouped together as, as, a, um, as a unit, you know, and... and I and mean, the idea that being that I want to put them into one physical motion rather than having it be no, 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 no. All right. So the first three notes, I think, hang together quite well as a natural gesture. You've got, right? And I want to feel in my arm that that feels good. And I'm just coming around, feels good. But, you know, maybe that's not the gesture you want. Maybe your first gesture goes like this. Maybe that works better for you. Okay, so I'm figuring out how to group notes together. Right? I'll talk about that a little more in just a sec. First thing though, for these first, I don't know, what is it, like eight measures or so, definitely we need to think about the overall phrase and the overall line. So I'd, I'd probably start practicing just with chords, honestly. I'd maybe go... And a little more... stop practice, very good for intonation, but also can give you an idea of that harmonic structure and what that's going to do for your phrase. So again, maybe I'm just starting out a little less. The tension builds. Ooh, builds a little more. And it releases. Okay, and there's a Again, a million places in this piece and in all the box suites where you can just practice the chords and that kind of idea. All right, so back to what the bow was doing, though. Maybe I'll, um, you know, I've got this gesture. I'll put in the whole phrase, just taking out all those other things. Or I forgot, your, your uh, gesture was this, so let's add another one. We could have this. Right, that kind of gesture. Or maybe yours is this whole figure. And I'm grouping them, you know, in my mind, in my body, all right? And I would go through the whole piece and just figure out where 
I might put my chunks. Now, the beginning, honestly, I think the beginning is pretty straightforward. But as you go on, it's a little more open to interpretation. So for example, if I were to start in measure nine, you know, maybe my first gesture is, or maybe it's not. Maybe this note is part of what came before, and then it's this. Or maybe it's the whole thing. Um, and, you know, deciding where my gestures lie is going to have a lot to do with what I decide to do with my bowings. Like, if I think this is one group, then definitely I want to slur those in. But if I think this first note is part of what came before, then maybe that'll be separate and this will be a, a new bow. I don't know. So I would go through and just try every single pattern of notes, grouping of notes, to see what works for me. So. Pretend I am practicing right now. I might go... out to see what I like and what I don't uh, and eventually I'll keep some and I'll get rid of others all right so this is literally what I do for pretty much all my Bach practice to work on my phrasing now if I'm working on let's say intonation which I gotta say Bach sounds way better if it's in tune um, you know a lot of slow practice I would put on a drone pitch perhaps, um, like if you've watched any of my scale videos, you know what I've done with the drone there. So here I am in G major, well G would be a very obvious pitch to go for, at least at the beginning. Um, so I'd have that drone on and I would just go through... intonation or I would do the double stop stuff like I showed you that's also great for intonation um, and then my other big suggestion you know I'm not going to give you too much because again it's your own thing um, my other big suggestion would be listen to a lot of different recordings uh, consult a lot of different editions I use the Baron Writer a lot of people use the Baron Writer but um, you know there's a lot of different ones out there maybe you're more into the in which case you'll have some very different bow challenges. You might practice that kind of stuff just on open strings, right? Okay, because what you're going for is the evenness. So if that's your bowing choice, um, that's that's great. You're just going to have to come up with you know sort of a different approach to grouping those notes in gestures. Um, so a lot of different editions look at, uh, listen to a lot of recordings. My personal favorite, Peter Wispelray's recording. Um, and uh, just generally play around with it a lot. Try different ways. Don't get stuck in one way. Uh, because, you know, these are pieces that can stay with you for the rest of your life. And the fun of it is that, you know, you might see something new one day that you want to try and, and, uh, and throw away what you did when you were, you know, a bunch of years younger. Um, so be flexible, try different things. Oh, and I should mention, at the end of this first uh, prelude, definitely do practice it without every other note. So I'm talking here about measure 33 or so, um, where you've got, right? Just get rid of all those A's. phrasing you actually truly want to do. And then you go ahead and add them back in 
and keep your phrasing ideas. So. <laughs> Have fun with your Bach. It's great stuff.